Hello everyone. In this lecture, we will be discussing about Appian functions. So there are functions which is already created in Appian. Like this whole cloud environment is built in Java, right? But we don't have to worry about Java because we are using whatever is already built. So few functions are there which is already created by Appian and uh, we can use that functions to build our own logic. And we can use this expression rule which we are building as a function, right? So we'll see that what functions available in Appian and uh, how we can use these functions because there is a proper syntax which we need to follow whenever we are using these functions, right? Because it's a low code, we don't have to worry about uh, um, in depth how these functions are created, but we just need to understand how we can use these functions. So you can see, and th this list we have, we have a lot of functions like uh, Excel functions we have, we have uh, logical functions and false, if not conditionally statements we have, choose, match, true and false and looping functions we have, there are different looping functions and we have mathematical functions. So we'll try to use some of the functions and we'll see how this works. And we will also understand about the data type and type casting. So the type casting is basically to change one data type into another data type, right? For example, if I'll use one function which is sum and uh, what I need to do, I just need to pass the parameters here. You can see I wanted to add one to one into one to one again. And then if I'll test this rule, then I'm getting the result. So you can see this is my function and this add end is my parameter. So add all given numbers to the return to return the sum. And the return type is number decimal. And we can also check the return type here. You can see the type is number decimal, right? So now let's say I wanted to convert this return type, this number decimal into string, right? So a string is text. So how I can convert this number into text? So there is a function called to string. So we can do the type casting like this. You can see the written type is text now and it is coming in double quotes. So in Appian, whenever uh, I'll say double quotes or whenever, whenever I'll talk about the string, it means we have to use double quotes there, right? And if I wanted to format this, I can use this. It is already formatted. Now, if I wanted to again convert this to a string into number, then I can use two. And you can see when I'm writing two, then all the suggestions are coming to boolean, to community, to data subset, to date, today decimal, to document, to folder, group, integer. So we have to use this one, to integer. And I will again put this whole code inside this function. I'll put the bracket and you can see whenever I'm not putting the bracket, I'm getting this issue. Unmatched open parenthesis, right? And I will complete this and I can hit the test button. So now you can see again the data type is changed into a number. So this is very important because uh, in Appian we have different different type of data types like integer, number and we have array and uh, we have different data sets. Whenever we are fetching the data from data base then we are having data subset and various different things, right? So now let's do one thing. Let's also understand how array works in Appian. So whenever I'll talk about array, it means these curly braces, right? So let's let's do one thing. Let's directly hit the test button. You can see the type is list of variant, right? Because it's a list, it's an array now. And I can put anything inside this. One, two, three, four, and three again. If I test this and you can see, I'm getting the list. And um, if I wanted to put some string in between, I can write something, let's say test, and again, logic that's all if i wanted to test it again i will get these things also inside this array so i'm having one two three four five one two three four three and the test and logic you can see these are text and these are number integer right and uh, let's say i wanted to add or remove few things then i can do that and there is one more important function which is uh, there and it's the best practice to use that functions everywhere whenever we are indexing something so that function is called index so for example i wanted to index um, the second element of this array so you can see the definition of index first is the data and then index and then default you can see default is in italic because it's not a mandatory thing right 
and the one which is not in italic we have to pass it it's a mandatory parameter so what are parameters the things which we are passing inside the functions so my first parameter is this whole data which we have already created and the index i want is let's say fifth index so the index starts from one one two three four five or i'll change it to six so i'll get a proper result and then the default value i will give empty i will close this index and let's format this and if i hit the test you can see i'm getting the value which is test so this is at my sixth index so this is why we use index and it's always to handle the error by putting some default value in this parameter all right so let's save this expression rule again and it will again create a version if i wanted to roll back i can go and check it so this is what we can do with functions and this is how we can do the testing read the description and uh, we can use different test cases but there are no test cases and because there is no inputs currently so we'll see that in later lectures that's all for this lecture